Thank you. Well, it, was, it, it is an honor to have you here. Um, thank you again. And I would like to know, in your opinion, where, what key elements are necessary to successfully bring a convention on zero tolerance for sexual abuse and justice for victims to free, free team? Are there specific strategies or collaborative approach that you believe will be crucial for the successful development and implementation of such convention? Thank you. I think that's something that we need to get to know. We have to go to the United Nations and uh, we are going to present to them why we believe that um, rape should be seen as a convention. They should give rape the same priority they've given to um, torture, the same priority they've given to um, um, genocide. We should also make sure they understand that rape is as heinous as as torture is as bad as genocide. That is what we will say to the United Nations. But if they have a different description, we'll ask them to prescribe for us.
is not easy to achieve. So my question is, what is the challenges or obstacles that you are facing or you face while pushing this work? Sweden, gender equality is something that we talk about all the time, and it's 
very important. Uh, as a student, I also think, speaking collectively with everyone here, that, that I believe we're here because we want to make a difference in the world. So my question for you is, what advice do you have for every single individual in here to make that difference, to further the things that you talked about today? What advice do you have for all of us to further that inspiration that you have within you?
girls for job to get continuous supply of these menstrual products. Thank you. Well, um, that is what I'm working towards, really. In terms of our sanitary pads, we, we have not had the opportunity for any international um, partner to help us. We've been doing it ourselves. It is Sierra Leone's initiative, Sierra Leone funding it, and it is Sierra Leone who are actually financing um, the, the buying of those sanitary pads to be able to give to our, our kids. So what we are, we are now, because when we produce the free sanitary pad in Sierra Leone, I think about 15 other countries have now introduced it in their country. 15 other countries, including California here. Yeah, California is a city, right? <laughs> but, but including California, when you look at California GDP, you know what that means, right? But including California. So what my hope is, the way all of these international donors are willing to give up condom, mm -hmm. and I'm hoping that, willing to give condom that people will use in their own pleasure when they want to. You should be able to give a sanitary pad because our own problem is not it's not pleasure and it's not a choice. So we're hoping that by the time I leave the stage as first lady, the international community will now start to look at sanitary pad as not a rich people's product, but everybody should have. Just as the way they are supplying condoms in hospitals, they should be supplying our sanitary pads. Right. Laura is from your, the country of one of your best friends. The first lady, yeah, yeah, exactly, the first lady of Turkey. Uh, and she is on the committee with the other students here working on the follow up of your program. Yes, and I'm very honored to be here. Thank you. So yeah, I'm Laura. Um, thank you for the um, I wanted to just say thank okay. you, of course. Thank you for all of your work. Thank you for being here today and celebrating with us. Um, so womanhood, um, although it's shared by over half the world, is like a profoundly, profoundly unique experience, right? So it's it's really the only group differentiator that is cross spatial. So that suggests that it's been around since the, literally the dawn of life, right? So my question for you, Her Excellency, is regarding gender-based violence and sexual violence, how do you account for the fact that these malicious behaviors are often rather, not necessarily unintentional, but not necessarily on, on purpose, since they've been like a prehistoric product of biology and have kind of been systemically reinforced ever since? In other words, what, what measures have you taken that account for the fact that it's bi men are biologically ingrained to assert their physical dominance. Whoa. I don't even have a clue what you're saying. <laughs> <laughs> Can you break it down again? Yes. Okay. So, so okay, let me help you. Don't talk biology. Okay. Don't talk medical. <laughs> None of them are my hero. Don't speak simple English. <laughs> <laughs> Basically, across every single life form, there's men, or there's males and there's females, yeah. right? And typically, the male is, in, in most species, the dominant one, yeah. right? So, which suggests that gender-based violence and sexual violence has been around since essentially the dawn of life, because men, or because the point of life is to reproduce, or was at some point, to reproduce. And so, in order to successfully do this, men will assert their physical dominance, right? So I'm asking, how do you take this into consideration when you know tackling such nuanced issues? That is, again, if you, if you remember what I said, we need to still let the men know they're the king. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Allow them to, to go to their ego. <laughs> but then, let them see us not as threat, but see us as partners. When you see someone as your partner, you don't hurt them. So us women, we should be smart enough to give them that space, let them entertain themselves in that animal kingdom of the king, as long as we're able to get our safety. Because if we don't do that, we'll be talking about gender-based violence forever. Because they are not going to change their dominance. They are not going to just because we want equality, we expect them to say, well, if you want equality, come and take it. No, they're not going to do it. Okay. 
because it's a fearful place. Imagine I'm sitting here, knowing full well that everyone there wants my seat. You think I will get up? I will not. So that's how a man feels. They've been the king of the kingdom for all this time. And now women are now saying, I mean, all this time we've been silent. We're allowing them to just go on. And now we're saying, no, oh, but we've had enough. We have to use a different method now for them to understand. Rather than scream, because screaming has not worked. So let us now use a softer method, a nice way, and then get our way. <laughs> Very powerful. Thank you. Thank you. Day instead of the men's day. Do we have men's day? <laughs> every day, every day is a man's day. <laughs> <laughs> so, 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 We don't, we don't 
put religion. Religion is not, a, is not an issue in our house. So because we, religion is not an issue in our home, religion cannot be an issue in our country. That is the one thing we have enjoyed. We are the most religious tolerant country in the world today. Yeah. On Friday, in Greta and Sierra Leone, on Friday, you will know who is Muslim, you will know who is Christian. Because everybody wear the same kind of outfit, a Muslim outfit, on a Friday. When is Christmas? You will know who is Christian, you will know who is Muslim. Because every house will be celebrating. We intermarriage. We we don't talk about there's no we don't go and put our kids and tell them, hey, you have to be Christian. No, you have to be Muslim. No. My my last my last child, my daughter is eight. And you know, I have never told my daughter you're Muslim. Never. But my husband named my daughter after his mother. Now, mistakenly, one day they were just talking. And then he said to my daughter, Do you know your namesake is a Muslim? That's my husband's mother. He said, Do you know your namesake is a Muslim? My daughter said, Ah, oh, okay. A week later, the father said, Amina, I want us to go to church. She said, I'm not going to church. I'm a Muslim. <laughs> Who told you you're Muslim? So he looked at me thinking that I had that conversation with my daughter. So my daughter said, You told me I am a Muslim. My husband said, When? He said, Well, you told me your, your mother is a Muslim and you named me after your mother, so that makes me a Muslim. <laughs> I did not say, Alhamdulillah, in fact, I said, No, 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 no. <laughs> the children that we have today. They will choose what they want to do. They will choose which religion they want to follow. So there is no need to waste your time prescribing for them. The moment they are 18, you'll be surprised. So I don't talk about religion to my children. I don't talk about anything. I, I, I talk about morality. I talk about how they should be a good person. I try to make them know that it cannot be just about yourself. You can give as much as possible in helping poor people. When I go and give charity, when I do charity work from when they were like five, six, seven, I introduced them to that. You need to give back to people. Even before my husband become president, I said to them, for you to survive in the world that we live today, if you have this much, make sure you give 50% of that much that God has blessed you with to poor people. I didn't say go and give it to Muslim. I said give it to poor people. That's the morality I teach my children. Now when it's time for them to choose which religion they want to follow, not my problem. Whichever way they want to go, it is not between me and them, it's between them and Allah. When they go, I mean, in the Bible it says, when you die, you'll be judged. In the Quran, it says, when you die, you'll be judged. So whatever good you do here, if what the Bible and the Quran are preaching to us is the reality, which means, whatever good you do here, when you die, you'll meet it where you go. Whatever bad you do here, when you die, you'll meet it where you go. So it is better to be a good person than to be a bad person. And we have many more that I will give to you. You can see all those other smart questions that have been asked endlessly, so we greatly appreciate that. And we welcome Ambassador Soa, oh yes, the Deputy Permanent Representative of the Republic of Sierra Leone, and the two heads of Chancery. Can we have the two heads of Chancery stand up? Yes, Reiki and Sulemana. Yes, wonderful, wonderful. So we would like now to present you with some gifts from Columbia Teachers College. <laughs> so the students will come up here, Ziva and Emily and Josefina, all of you, right? And you 
can present these gifts mm -hmm. to yes, do, do, do. the ambassadors mm -hmm. and uh, yes, the coaches, and Ambassador Sova. Okay, so here you go. Here you go. Okay, all the students collecting around. Yeah. Oh. Here's a bit of a touch. Yeah. Oh, wait. No, I mean, it's in the next gift. Watch it. Thank you. Sorry, 